Welcome to Blue Talks. Welcome to Oxford University. It's a big honor for me to be able to share with so many parents um, secrets of parenting. So I will be giving away a few secrets. How to raise smart children. There are a few parenting styles that parenting, uh, parents practice. And uh, the question is, is there a parenting style which is most efficient and gives best outcome. There is one. It's been practiced and um, designed by a nanny. It's called blue parenting. Blue stands for intelligence. It means smart parenting using efficient tools which actually work. And blue parenting is a combination of Western best parenting style, styles with uh, Western parenting styles. And I have a luxury of having close insight of um, two worlds, how they parent, because I'm Asian. I was born and raised in Asia. Uh, then my whole adult life I spent in West and I raised my own family in West. Half of my relatives are Asian, half of them are English. And I watch how they deal with their children and what the outcome. So that is a blue parenting. This is a best of both worlds. Let's have a look what is the difference or what are the differences between two uh, cultures in parenting. Eastern parents, they introduce chores at a very early age, as early as three, four, five. Because they're so little, they do them together and it's fun. And the initial programming of chores programmed very positively. And that is why 10 years old Eastern children can cope with so many complicated tasks. Uh, as time goes, they get so good at it, they undertake more and more tasks. And this voice in their heads, you're so good at it, you can do even more, you can in fact do anything you want, is good. They take those skills to school and they use them there and that is why when they come to Britain they shine with brilliance academically and not because they have more brain cells than Western children but because of parenting is different. So. Eastern parents also talk about finding a purpose in life at a very early age. Children don't fully understand, but they still talk about it. For example, my niece, she's eight, and she said, how come every time our animals get sick, we have to go to neighboring village to find a vet? Then he takes his time, and by the time he comes, our animals get even more sick, and some of them even die. I'm going to become a vet and I'm going to come back and make sure no animals get sick. She's very passionate about animals. My best TEDx talk in 2023 is Cory Porius TEDx. And when I watched your video, Cory, and that is why I didn't give feedback online, I wanted to talk from Oxford University about it. I had tears in my eyes. For two decades I waited, somebody shout about it from the stage. We, yes, have to inspire from schools, but preferably at home to finding a purpose. Eastern parents do it at home. Eastern parents also have very high expectations from their children. Even from the ones who can't cope academically, they still expect them to be successful. And it's a good thing because child thinks, wow, if my parents believe in me, it means I can. It's a good thing. And underestimation of chores here. The chores have significant effect on child's development. 
And because Eastern parenting is involving children in chores at such a very early age, they have very many different skills before they even leave school. Okay, let's have a look at Western parenting. I have to be honest here. I fell in love with Western parenting from the minute I stepped into this country because I was so young and I was so surprised how adults talk to children. They treat them like human beings. And those little human beings, they talk back, they have arguments and they can say no. If your children say no, please embrace it because they're practicing no in safe environment with you. When they step out to scary world, they can say no to an abuser. And why I am saying that? Because I was raised in East and I witness, especially women, they stay in abusive relationships because they did not practice to say no. Because Eastern authoritarian parenting is beautiful, but they don't have feedback from children. And we have this in West. Western parenting is so focused on um, emotional nurturing of a child. It's simply brilliant. So, best parenting style in West considered to be authoritative. In Britain we say authoritative. It's considered to be most balanced. Even that parenting style, to me, in my observation, sways towards permissiveness. And I tell you why. Every year I watch school leavers from mainstream schools. They come out of schools and they are so lost, 70% of them, because they don't know what they're good at. Parents didn't have expectations. They never heard of um, purpose in life. <coughs> and what they do, they're so scared to try. They stay with their parents they can't support themselves, then they go on benefits and they, some of them they are stuck forever in that cycle. Imagine we take this beautiful Western parenting which is nurturing emotional side and we sway towards Eastern parenting and adopt those very many beautiful, wonderful uh, skills from Eastern parenting. The outcome is phenomenal. I practiced that for so many years and just not just like me, only me, but many parents, because the world is integrating now. Lots of Asians come here, lots of Westerns go there. So, Western best parenting style, if sways away from permissiveness. Why? Because permissiveness and permissiveness <laughs> And uh, democracy sometimes can harm child's future. Too much democracy is not good. Okay. Next, we, who does the parenting and who watches the other parents as well, need to remember that without boundaries and discipline, there is no smart parenting. What is boundaries? Boundaries is internal system. It takes the child to outside world, then helps the child and adult to walk throughout the life. In order to build that system, we need structured way, and that is discipline. Discipline is not a punishment. Discipline comes from Latin and Hebrew Bible. Discipline is teaching. We teach children what is right, what is wrong. And no boundaries and discipline without bonding. Bonding is a foundation of parenting. And right here, today, I can teach you very quickly how to bond with your children, okay? You only need 15 minutes. And why 15 minutes? Because I work with very busy parents. You would be surprised. 15 minutes is a luxury to give to a child of undivided attention without iPad, without phone, without siblings, without any external involvement. And what you do, you sit your child and say, what would you like me to do? Would you want me to play with you? Tell me about your day. Who is your best friend? And how are you feeling? And if your child is a teenager and says, well, I tried marijuana today, what do you do? 
You don't say, you are so grounded. You will be even more grounded tomorrow if you try. <laughs> because that child is going to try. This method does not work. What you do, you take a deep breath. Stay cool and chilled. And you say these very words. Do you know, I'm so proud of you. You're so smart. And thank you for telling me. I'm so scared. If you take Mariana again, what would happen? And remember, I love you. I love you unconditionally, no matter what. Leave it at that. Your child will think of you before taking marijuana again. And before listening to bad crowd. 15 minutes of time will give you 15 million benefits. When do we start parenting? Lots of um, adults say, I'm pregnant, I just found out I'm pregnant, I have, to get I have to get ready to be a parent. I'm going to give up uh, bad habits, bad diet, but it's already eight weeks past. So according to scientists, the very first brain cells, they have to go to right places. And if there is a substance such as alcohol, for example, this is just an example, okay? Apparently they go, they struggle to go right to right places. So the foundation of healthy brain is in jeopardy already. Blue parenting promotes detoxing body from harmful substances before getting pregnant. And detoxing mind, so adults don't bring their past injuries into future parenting. Scientists also say by the time baby born already has 300 billions of Neurons, neurons, it's almost fully formed brain. So parenting starts before conception. It's very similar to gardening. This yew tree is in Scotland. It's almost 4,000 years old. Obviously the seed was healthy. It was in acidic uh, so soil, well drained, and it's still standing beautifully in churchyard. It's very similar to child rearing. One of the biggest secrets of raising smart children is child doesn't have to be perfect. Child can have neurodiverse conditions and physical disability. Let me show this. This is Ellie. First time I saw Ellie from BBC forecast from Beijing Olympics. And guess what? She was so little. She was only 13 and she held two gold medals and had massive smile. And we found out she is our pride and joy. Ellie was born with disability and she was abandoned by her birth parents. This is Jessica Long. She was abandoned by her parents too. She was adopted when she was 13 months and her both legs were amputated because of her disabilities. Question is, what is the difference between these two sets of parents? The first set who gave up those babies, they only saw inabilities in them. And the second set who adopted the very same babies and nurtured, they only saw abilities. And that is the secret. When I talk to parents sometimes, I say, tell me about your child. And parents say, well, because of his ADHD, you know, um, his struggles and, and he gets in trouble at school, etc. Let me stop you right there. I'm not interested. What about his amazing drawings? What about he made new friend yesterday? And what about his amazing infectious laughter everyone loves? So focus only on positive sides of a child and only on abilities. Blue parenting doesn't use punishment. Punishment doesn't leave a room to learn and make a choice. And I give you an example. 10 years old child, he's English. Last week, he came home and he put his pocket money in the ta on the table. He said, I know you told me not to do it. I know the rules, I still did it. And I know I'm not supposed to have my pocket money this week. That is blue parenting. Nobody is shouting at him. Nobody is frustrated. And punishment is when parents withdraw love. When parents use bad language 
and child feels bad. That is for punishment. Blue parenting does not use it. Time out. I see parents practicing time out all the time. From the distance, I, I feel the frustration. And I know that parent already lost a battle a while ago. It doesn't work. There are better methods. And no naughty corners or naughty steps. Blue parenting never practice, never will. There are more simplified methods you can put in place which work. Corey, call me. I can help you with your two children. <laughs> so, the question is, is there a formula for smart parenting? Yes. And the interesting part is this formula was written by somebody who has nothing to do with parenting. He's a mathematician and IT programmer. This formula says doing nothing at all versus making small consistent changes. Those parents who don't have 15 minutes for their children because they're too busy, because maybe they think I pay for someone to do it, or they're too stressed, whatever. By the end of a year, there is no fulfillment in both parties. But those parents who don't have 15 minutes, they have to pay mortgages. They are worried about bills. They're worried about children. Some of them have depression. They're stressed. They have to run um, and develop business. Lots of reasons. But they're prepared and decided to spend five minutes with their children and give undivided attention and tell your child how much you love him or her. Five minutes today, six minutes tomorrow, seven day after, consistently throughout a year. And that parent, by the end of a year, going to have strongest bond with the child. And you can put in place boundaries, discipline, anything. And Blue Parenting can teach all these methods. Please remember, this formula worked, works, and will work. Let's raise smart children. Thank you.